ready? Born ready. It's Wednesday. <clears throat> Welcome to your favorite podcast, this favorite podcast. We got a great episode for y'all. Two of my two favorite people in the building. Let's go. Hey. Shout out to the R.A. Lennox drop. I actually really like this video. She did. She did. I ain't get it. But we're going to get it started. We're going to do it just like this. What's up, family? It's your boy, Elders. You are tuning to the Just Elders podcast, the greatest podcast to ever hit the airways. I am super excited because we are about to record the greatest episode we have ever recorded. I say it every time, and I mean it every single time. Let me get a round of applause, a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that listened to last week's episode. We really appreciate you. Shout out to Dawn Levant and everything that she's doing to change the world. It was a very informative episode. Um, you know, shout out to Jackson, Mississippi and everybody that's just going through that devastation. So, And also appreciate everybody that donated to our water drive. We were able to raise uh, a total of 4,000 cases of water that we shipped it out last week. So thank you. Thank you to WALK. Thank you to West Hunter Baptist Church. Thank you to everybody in the community that just gave. We appreciate it and we love y'all. But let's just jump right into it. Uh, super excited about this uh, episode. I talked to Key. One, Key, let me just say this. We, uh, sister's been on a roll. We don't, we don't have a lot of sister guests, like, very consistently lately. Hey, I was about to hit you <laughs> with the, because I was like, what you mean? But no, nah, no, nah, you're right. No, nah, guess why? No, nah, yeah, we, we, we. Maybe uh, the standard have rose, you know what I'm yeah. saying, since we put that statement out there. Like, look, yeah, y'all we, come on this podcast with me, we need y'all to give it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, tell we used the to be truth. struggling with sisters on the podcast. Well, you know? Because brothers come on, we really pie. We have a good time. We give it up. We, you know, we we here to have a conversation. You know, since we being politically correct. Like, they husband timid, watching or something. You know like, they future <laughs> husband watching. I don't want to yeah. say the wrong thing. We, and, like, and then we ain't, we ain't too salacious. We ain't actually nothing crazy. And it's not here. live. Like, we can edit it. Like, you can say what you want to say, and yeah. then come like, you know what? I, I don't feel like what I said. Take, take that out for me. We don't take out a few things before. A few things. <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> uh, but now nah, let's get it right into sure. it. I'm excited about these guests. This first lady right here to my immediate left. Uh, last time you heard her was episode 14. Dang, dang, we are dang. episode 167. That's how you know she don't fuck with us. Uh, that's my second advice. invite, by the way. You know. So episode 14, nah, you can't cancel Kanye. Uh, the first time we heard this beautiful, intelligent young lady, uh, y'all make some noise for Higgy Beats. Y'all. One of the hottest in the game. How you doing, sis? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm doing good. Just worked out. I'm here now. I'm glad you're Feeling you refreshed. Look. Yeah. I mean, as you can see, we done made a lot of upgrades. A lot of things have changed. Yeah, yeah I, like, but, I like what you've done with the place. <laughs> but a lot has changed on your end. Too. Yeah, You've sure. been doing a lot. So we're going to get into it. Um... This next young lady, I can't even remember where we met. I was just talking to Jamal about that, so I'm going to tell you. I don't oh. remember the name of the event, but it was at Hans. <coughs> it was on a roof, and it was like a, a I know the event. A tent I know the event. It yeah, was, it I was, remember it was, those. It was Bossip. Oh, yeah. It was Bossip right. event. Right. I, I, right. I, I, now I clearly... But that was 2019. He told me. He was like, that was 2019. So it's been a minute. Yeah, so Bacasa Mall, you know, I've definitely been watching you and all the work that you do. I'm a fan from afar. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, I got two of the, I would argue, two of the hottest positions in the city right now. Sisters really taking over, knocking it down. Yeah, y'all make some noise for the great London. Thanks. How you doing, love? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, um, me and Keith were talking about it, um, just music. It's One music been doing its thing lately. There's a lot of drops happening, people doing their thing. Ari Lennox just dropped. Um the reason I was excited about this drop, and everybody knows the list of this podcast, I don't really be on music heavy like that. But she had tweeted a picture of like 80 songs, right? And you know, and then she only dropped 12. So I was like, yo, I want to listen to the 12 she dropped mm-hmm. out of this 80. Like most people don't, you know, who really put that much work in yeah. for one album? So 
And then she didn't do it like Chris Brown and give us 40 songs. You know? <laughs> I, still ain't, I still ain't got through. I, I have a short attention span. I, I ain't got through Chris Brown's last album right. before this twin church. So I, I said, who better to have it with than uh, two sisters who live for this music? You know what I'm saying? And not only music lovers, but music creators, curators. And uh, that's why y'all here. Thank you for having us. So let's get into it. Uh, first, you know, let's hear about what y'all doing. What's what's new? What are we working on right now? What's happening? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yes, flow. Go ahead. Uh, for me, <laughs> y'all like anybody who know me, follow me. Like I'm real heavy into sync licensing. So that's like always my like number one focus. So what is what is that? We gotta break that down. Yeah, sync licensing is basically um, whenever your music is placed to picture. So that could be like TV, film. Um, advertising, I get into that as well. So like commercials, stuff like that. Gotcha. But, um, yeah, so that's like a heavy focus for me because like the budgets are well worth focusing <laughs> on. So how did you even know to uh, <coughs> go towards that really um, you know, sync license? Uh, I found out about it at this panel here in Atlanta. That's one of the things I really do love about Atlanta is like they have access to information here. So um, they were. Where just are you from? Columbus, Ohio. Six on four. Go Buckeyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I just learned about it at a panel, and ever since then I was like, oh, I need to get into that. So yeah. So I remember um, out of nowhere, Maul posted something. He was like, yo, we going up right now. We going viral. Yeah. And um, it was the Juju. Yeah. How did how did that whole tra how did that whole track come in? Yeah. Shout out to Mogul Maul. That's the homie. Uh, so Juju, yeah, claps for Mogul Maul. He's been a guest on here a few times. Uh, he came on one or two times. Probably two, probably two times. Probably two times. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, so that came about because I was on Clubhouse looking up music supervisors. I just typed in music supervisors. It was like going through anybody who had that in their bio or whatever. And I'm um, reaching out to them, like, because those are the people who select music for TV and film. Um, one of the ones who I ended up connecting with, her name is Jessica Entner. Um, she's in LA. And she was just like, wow, you reached out at such a good time. I actually just had something come across my desk. If you're interested, you could submit for it. And I was like, okay, cool. And it was for the Juju project. So um, at the time, she was like, uh, but I need it back in like a week. So she sent me the brief. It was very detailed. Shout out to her for like being specific. And um, I just hit up Jamal like, hey, here are two beats. I need you to write something to this. This is what they're looking for. You got three days to get it back so I could get it mixed and mastered and sent over. And... He got it done. I got it turned in, and literally, that's it right there. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so hey. it was for a TikTok campaign. So that's why the beat is like this, because like this is the type of stuff that people on TikTok get dancing to. So yeah, they already had the dance choreographed actually too. So they sent me to dance. So even though the music wasn't done for it, we knew the exact BPM to make the beat for. We knew the dance moves, so he could write his lyrics to match the dance moves and stuff like that. And a lot of other people submitted for it. It came down to our song and one other song. They sent it over to Juju's team, and they chose ours. So, shout mm. out to God. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> life. And then you had got another one, and we can get back into it later, but like I know you had did, uh, it was some uh, some commercial I seen. A uh, beer commercial for Australia Heli stuff. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So you been, same, shout out to Jessica, same music supervisor. Actually hooked me up with that one, too. So, yeah. And it was just a random reach out network. Yeah, it just that's what I do. Like ninety percent of my time, I just be trying to make connections. Shooting the shot. That's the, it. Hey, that's shooting the shot. What, what's so funny is I remember when Maul came on. I think the second time. I think he had his mixtape about to come out. He was like, "Hey man, listen to my music." Mm -hmm. And I told him personally, I was like, "I like your I like your joints, but you have a lot of music that I feel like sounds like scores. I can hear behind, mm. you know, a commercial or on TV or in the movie. So it's funny, like." That y'all did that later. I'm like, yeah. it, it was perfect because he sounds like that kind of rapper. So like, yeah. shout out to Maul again. Yeah, shout out to Maul. He's dope. I see you. I see you. I see you. Hear you. Hear you. That's what's up. Man, where we at, baby? So, um, probably last time you guys checked me out, I was just solely producing, but uh, I've been stepping more into like the artistry realm. And I remember that. Let, let, can I just say? The rollout was beautiful. I appreciate it. Can I just say that? Like, <laughs> like, cause again, you listen to episode 14, like we just talking about, you know, you Kanye, you five beats a day for, yeah. for a summer. For like, sure. we, like <laughs> we were watching it and then just to see the the development of the artistry, it, yeah. it was a it was a very fun process. Like the from the photo shoots to the different video shoots. So just talk about what pulled you out. Were you out were you like a Kanye? Did you always know you was a rapper? Like I uh -huh. always like I 
for sure, I'm I'm a writer as well. So mm-hmm. like I always felt confident in my ability to put the music, whether it's production or the lyrics together to make, you know, things sound sonically great. But um, I was just more so focused on being behind the scenes and really kind of timid to like step out in front of the camera versus being behind the board. Right. So um, for me, it just took a little bit of uh, getting irritated that all of the things that I was submitting for like songs or for like syncs, like I just kind of felt like instead of people taking what I'm submitting and doing their own thing to it, they were just kind of trying to mimic what I was doing in the song. And I just kind of felt like, well, am I cheating myself? So mm, okay. uh, yeah, so it kind of gave me that, the confidence to really step out and put myself out there and my sound and what I wanted to be, you know. What do you like better, the producing or the artistry? Honestly, um, I like the artistry. I think producing is easier, but I like being the artist. Like I, I like um, being able to, you know, put on a platform how I want people to perceive me and like a different message that I would like to project. So. I think it's more um, art and the artistry than um, in just production alone. Like I, I was watching like your videos and everything. And uh, who that who that nigga you had in the video? Uh, who that dread nigga? I was like, hold on now. I, I could have been casting for that shit. Now. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I seen the music videos, so I said, okay, he got here really for real. Like one of my favorite with this one right here. Hold on, turn me up, turn me up. Oh, that's a lot of people's favorite. That's my least favorite for whatever reason. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You should like stuff. Pull up, tell me the unit. Yeah, I love hot Cheetos, though. That shit right, man. I think it was the vibe. It was like a really fun record that we kind of came up with literally on our way to the gas station while we was at the studio. And we had absolutely no intentions on recording that record, but we got back to the studio and was kind of like, you know what, load it up. Let's go ahead and knock that that's out good. real quick. So it, we just caught a vibe. So you producing for yourself, or mm-hmm. okay, that's well. Good. So like, I, I work with other producers too, just because I am a producer. Don't mean like, mm, don't yeah, that's my, what I was wondering. Don't touch like, my no, yeah. like, no. Are you um, the same way? I'm not an artist. Well, let's, like, let's let that be that. <laughs> I put other put people down. on my chair. I have no desire to be in the front. <laughs> she right. It is different. Like, I have no desire to be in the front. I like. Yeah. Back, it's yeah. it's cool being tucked in the back. Like, I like it. But yeah. um, I think I just was doing myself a disservice. And so, like, now I'm just in, a, in the period of, like, trying to figure out the transition from behind the boards and just what that lifestyle, because the, the business is completely different, right. you know, so trying to figure that part out, and as well as wear, like, a marketing head or a promoter head, so what's just developing one, Like, what's team. one thing you done learned about yourself as an artist since you done stepped out into it, like, you didn't know, like... That I didn't know about myself? Yeah. That I'm too much of a perfectionist, and sometimes it's not about, like, getting things, like, the best that it can be, it's just putting it out there and letting the people decide, because... Mm. For example, like you like hot Cheetos, right? You hate it. It's a good vibe for me, but it's my least favorite track that I put out. What's your favorite? That I've put out? Uh, Young Wild and Free is still my favorite. Oh, yeah, I fuck with that Young Wild and Free. It's still my favorite. Yeah, the Young Wild and Free. <laughs> All your shit be vibing, though, but I fuck with the Young Wild and Free, too. We can cuss on here for sure. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, y'all don't listen to the podcast. Right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But nah, nah, talk free. Do what you want to do. Okay. Um, but nah, so I definitely love the Young Wild and Free. That's a vibe too. Um, so who do y'all say really influenced y'all the most? Like as far as to really get into this, because I know both of y'all are fairly young. How old are y'all? Age wise. I'm thirty one. Thirty one. Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Yeah, yeah. So like, who's y'all? Who's y'all influences brought y'all in the game? Like, who made you fall in love with hip hop or R and B and all of that? Uh, I think. Like, I have a lot of, like, influences in music, being, like, a producer as well. But I would like to say someone sound who has really kind of pushed me to kind of listen to my sound and want to jump out there and do my own thing, um, Old Drake. Mm-hmm. Old Drake. Old Drake. Mm-hmm. I can get it. For me, um, like, before I was, like, into producing, I really was messing with Timberland. I mean, I still do. I said that like it was past tense. Like, that was, like, my main influence. But um, since I've been, like, finding my own style, Calvin Harris 
it's mm-hmm. been like a really big influence really for me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really dope. Yeah. Okay. But you like that kind of stuff, like yeah. you're more of a like performance type. Right. Because like when I first met you, you were doing more of like performance kind of DJing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like that's the crazy thing. It wasn't even really DJing. I mean, like I guess you could call it that, but I never had turntables. So it yeah. was like I was performing beats, like making beats live and stuff on my machine a lot. Um, prior like at to events? the pandemic, at events, yeah, like people would hire me to come make beats, like at their event. Matter of fact, what we were talking about prior, I don't know if I'm supposed to. Bring no, no, up. no, you not sure. <laughs> no, cause, cause, like, first of all, they didn't know they was both on. Like, I, right. I try not to let people know because I don't want. It was wanna, a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I don't like, want nobody. Like, oh, I don't want nobody calling each other and you know, potting before the pie. I be wanting to be. <laughs> oh yeah, you are kind of like no talking. Yeah, I know he shut us down. We was trying to catch up. He yeah, was like. like uh-uh. <laughs> Because you, <laughs> you, you want to capture it all here, like so. I did one. I was I was laughing when Kiva. I said, "Man, what if they got like some producer beef? Like, and we didn't oh. even. Oh yeah, like I hate London. Like, right. like, yeah, what like, if that was crazy? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> because I've heard that about producers. Like, you'll find like a beat pack, or you'll find a sound, and then like you'll put it out, and somebody will find that sound or try to copy it. And, I mean, that's just sampling. Yeah, that's just like I never even like I've been places like because splice is real heavy. Like I use splice a lot. And I've been places and heard like people use the same spice loop as me, but they flip it completely different. For so sure. to me, that don't really like bother me. We're just playing. I ain't think it would really be, but I was like, oh know, no, what, yeah, it ain't. yeah, what? So how did y'all? How do y'all know each other? Um, so we met, which uh, we just talk, we yeah. was just talking about. <laughs> but <laughs> we met at um, this video shoot when I first moved to Atlanta. She had produced a song for what was the artist's name? Carlette Martin. Shout out to Carlette. Yes, gospel artist. And I actually got invited to the video shoot because I met this guy, uh, Dominique who was directing the video at a completely different event. And he was like, hey, come out to this event or this video shoot. So I just was out there. I was just going to stuff. And she was there. And that was the first time we met. But um, of course, like just being in Atlanta, both being producers, we ran into each other. Since then, I think Earth Girl, you That's and I Earth Girl That's where I thought too, I right? met you at. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that was the second time we actually like was in the same That's space. What, uh, what's my girl? Molly, uh, Molly Hunter. Yeah, Molly, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Molly too. That, yeah, yeah that, that event little fire as hell. I wanted to be there. Yeah, uh, I wanted to be an Earth Boy. <laughs> like, <laughs> that event was lit. Uh, but nah, so I y'all just made me think of something for real, for real. So we've been—I don't know if y'all been watching the BET documentaries. Uh, they uh, they had one on um, Master P. They had one on Rough Riders. Are you talking about? Uh, They're doing one on Irv Gotti now in uh, Murder Inc. Inc. Okay. Oh, I haven't watched the BET ones. I'm thinking you're talking about it's something on Netflix. Well, these on okay. BET, they're good. You should check them out. Like okay. they're really good. They like do really good deep dives and just telling the history of how this stuff got where it was. So they're doing one on Murder Inc. now, and uh, it, a lot of stuff is just being revealed. Like one, how big Ashanti could have been if she wasn't placed under like just a man that really just taking advantage of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Really pressing himself on her. Like in Atlanta, do y'all see that in Atlanta? Working in Atlanta, like because y'all are very too attractive women. Have y'all been tried by men in the <laughs> industry? Like anything like that? Like or is Atlanta okay, different? Go, go, now? Ahead, go ahead. I got a story. <laughs> well, I got a couple stories, but yeah, like it's really hard. Like some, like if I was ugly <laughs> and talented, <laughs> like it might be easier. But at the same time, like I'm not. So like, but I've been. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. But it's just like I've been in I've been in rooms literally where I would lay out my business plan, show it to you on paper, like tell you how this is gonna work, and to have a man um, agree that yo that's dope. I think that's a fire plan. Like I believe in what you're doing, but I had a dream that I ate your pussy on the coffee conference room table last night. Yeah. Oh like really, bro? Like. But that I mean, and even that, and then like I've had like another meeting where I've went to. What do you do in that moment? You try to kind of, without losing your shit, <laughs> like you try to kind of be like, look, I'm not on that type of time. Like I came here because you alluded that you wanted to do business, right? And so, um, if that's not what we own, then appreciate the time. I just kind of roll. I'm out. You know, but um, yeah, like I had another guy like got, brought me to the to his offices. We talked business, and at the end, gave me a speech about how like you know Mariah, how she married her manager at the time, or you know what I'm saying, like give reference to all the people who has fucked they. <laughs> bro, yeah, like someone That's gave the London one. a baby. Like, yeah, come like on. 
Yeah, like shit like that. And it's just kind of like, I'm looking at this nigga like. Irv and Ashanti, like, come on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, and with a straight face, and it's just kind of like, y'all niggas is crazy. Like, <laughs> so is it easier to be. So if you are attractive in this music industry, would y'all say it's easier if you, and I want you to go too, like in the store, but is it easier um, to have a boyfriend or have like a male guy It's in easier your to have corner? a buffer. Have a buffer? Yeah, I, I've realized that I think I've, need, I've needed a buffer just to... You still got the same manager? We can edit it out if we want to talk about it. Uh, who was my manager at the time when you thought about it? When, who you uh, thinking about? The little nigga, uh, I don't know. I just... Uh. Um, so, yeah, I still rock with this guy named Fred. Are you talking about Fred? I think so. I don't know, because it was another guy that I don't name no more, and I'm just kind of looking at no, I think it's Fred. Nigga. I think it's Fred. Okay. Think it's Fred. <laughs> Fred, Fred, Fred got a good smile, like good, yeah, good yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Fred. Yeah, Fred. Yeah, yeah, Fred. I fuck with Fred. Yeah, fuck Fred, with Fred. That's my buffer, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fuck with Fred. I fuck with real good energy, cool mm -hmm. dude. You know what I'm saying? Me and, we, me and him connected soon. We see. Yeah, for yeah. sure. That's free. Okay. That's not right. Yeah, for me, I don't have a manager um, because like I was in a position where I had one and I didn't feel like he was doing anything for me. I, I felt like you. I could have just done better for myself. Like you. I'm sending business to him, like through him, like people reaching out to me. I'm like, all right, cool. Talk to my manager about it. And like no deals are getting closed. I just right. feel like I was missing out. I'd rather just handle stuff myself until I get the right manager. Right. It is better to have Damn. a buffer. No, it is what it is. Like, it, But it would be better to have somebody so that it's not like a direct connect. But I'm also like, just like the more you do it, like you kind of get, what's that, a spirit of discernment about like picking out the bullshit. Like I could tell when you reach out to me what you want. Like what she was saying about, oh, most people will be like, oh, well, you know, most you know, most girls uh, be messing with their manager and managers be trying to da, 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 da. Like if you talking to me about that, but you want to be my manager, I'm thinking you're most guys. Like you're telling me like, you know, most niggas will be doing this, but you ain't got to worry about that with me. I'm thinking you're the one I'm going to have to worry about. That with you. Like, why it's are you giving your it's line. It's giving, <laughs> literally. It's literally. Can, can, so. can I ask a question no. though? What about the other side though? Like has there ever been a time where – Maybe you do see somebody attractive in the industry to work together, and then like, how weird is that? Yeah, like to, you know, kind of shoot your shot at the manager or producer that you're working with. Like, yeah, how did that go? I mean, I guess it's just kind of, it's a vibe thing. Like you gotta kind of feel the energy. Like if you shoot for okay, so if you shoot a shot and it's giving kind of like it's no connection or you're not giving that vibe back, then it's just. Kind of like, all right. How y'all shoot shots? Go I was, bro, that's why I got quiet. I don't. <laughs> I was like, this ain't a question for me. <laughs> I don't do that in regular life, let alone in like a business environment. It's like, you know how like when you flirt with somebody? Man. Nah, I'm weird. I'm awkward. I don't flirt. Like, like a TikTok you don't never girl. know. You <laughs> Listen. So you just want that nigga to trip up. Bro, <laughs> yeah. It's like, if you like me or if I like you, whatever. That sounds so childish how you get if there? you like me. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you don't, if you don't approach me, you it, go it with just me. wasn't meant to be. <laughs> yes, yes or no, no. baby. <laughs> London, I have the, have this letter I want to give you. Can't run away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. But nah, that's uh, that that's crazy. We we were just talking about that. We were just saying how we feel like. Cause if you think about Ashanti, like she was just as big as Beyonce. Like her name was up there with everybody else. And then when you watch this documentary, it's like, dang, Ashanti probably could have been... That's a nigga. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nigga mind. Like, 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 you know like she could have yeah. been way bigger than she was, but she was in a situation where... And, and then she never gave her side of the story. So you're just hearing Irv's side of the story. And it sound colluded. Right. Like his shit was like, I just looked her... I was in the studio every night and she had on those so baby lame. fat yeah, them baby so fat lame. sweats and her ass was so fat and then I dropped her off and I gave her a kiss and I was like Mwah. and she looked at me like what took, took you so long? long? And I'm like nigga she probably looked at you like what the fuck? Right. Like what you just do? But has that happened to y'all? Have y'all refused or denied somebody in the industry and then kind of got played like you could have got that position? You said no, and then you yeah, wouldn't. all the time. Mm, that's yeah. why it's taking so long. Like, <laughs> hey, talk you know to what I'm saying? Talk like, to that's him. why it's taking so that's long. That's why it's taking so long. Y'all yeah. think we only y'all dicks, and it's just it, it's amazing at the business that I have seen just pass up things yep. that make sense because I don't want to fuck you. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't changed even now with like the industry being more 
you know, women led with like women managers and rappers. Not so many of niggas. Like yeah, it's I mean, still very male dominated. There right. are like more women coming up in the industry, but it's still male dominated. Shout out to the queens coming up. Yeah, okay. fact. But you know, and I just kind of feel like for a person like myself, it forces you to in London because like she's doing everything herself. It forces you to solve all the issues yeah. that you can by yourself because. It gets it's like running your head to a into a brick wall every time you ask for assistance or you ask for help. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like I hope they don't have it again, but you kind of hold your breath. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So mm-hmm. this is yeah. sounds this is not depressing. What? Like <laughs> not, no, but not, and, and they kind of fuck up everybody else. So y'all know uh, Taylor Nixon. Of course, right. that's my home girl. Right. So I met Taylor yesterday. Oh, for real? So she performed at this... E- oh, the, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that she performed at this Iman event, uh, this Muslim event at the uh, CT Martin Center. So we were there with social change, feeding people. It was like, it was fresh beats and eats. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, y'all see her band, she dope, got a good vibe. So, you know, I'm walking up to her after, like, yo, man, I like your energy. You know, I want, I want you to come on the pod. Mm-hmm. Like, but it's coming off, like... She, I could tell she looked at me on so like, nigga, you trying to holler? But I'm yeah. like, nah, I really just want you to come on my podcast. Like, that's all this shit is. But and then you said we're on episode 167. They be like, oh, okay, you really got a podcast. No, you know what really uh cooled it down? I literally, because I seen, I followed her. And then we got fought mutual. I was like, yeah, London actually coming on tomorrow. I, I okay. dropped her name. Oh, yeah. I was just about to say, I'll tell her about it. Like, yeah, yeah. Straight. So, and I ain't saying she said it came off like that, but she didn't say nothing. But I could tell. The you energy. know, it's always this, are you trying to holler or are you really trying to do Because that's got to be hard because it's like, how can you network and connect if yeah. you got to have this buffering nigga? It's it is what it is. You're attractive. Like, it, it's just going to happen. Like, and, 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 and Taylor's attractive. So, mm-hmm, I ain't is. saying she not, but for me, I'm really just... On business. Yeah, yeah. And then when I, I, I hear, like, like, Dame Dash describe it, like, Dame sounds like, you know, he surrounds himself with women. Like, he's always, like, big up the women mm-hmm. and stuff. So I, I don't know. I part of me thought like maybe it was changing, but then hearing y'all stories, it sounds like you know more shit changed, more shit stayed the same. Didn't Dame Dash date Aaliyah? Did, that that was, sound like it. Before. That was right, right. I feel like weren't they like in love or some shit? Yeah, I was, they were dating. Like it. But uh, he wasn't producing her though. How old is he? How old was? I thought she was. Le- I thought she was. I thought she was on legal age. I don't know the age difference. Don't get me caught up I'm on the phone. Like, you know, I got theories on all that stuff. I'm saying, you know, Jay- <laughs> look, he what know all the ages. <laughs> Shit. What you say about Jay-Z? You way older than Beyonce. Well, yeah, but it's Beyonce. Nah, nah, Beyonce nah, needs she, somebody that nah, can, can fuck play. That. See, see, I thought was, Beyonce and Aaliyah was about the same age. They are the same age, and Jay-Z was 50 fucking with her. Like, it was just, <laughs> it was a goddamn. It Beyonce was, was probably yeah. like, who? Who can Bruh, really keep up with it? Was a, <laughs> it was a play. Like, like, it was a young old play that went right. I ain't right. gonna hold you. I'm sorry, go ahead. It was a, it was a young old play that. I'm just saying, see, it was a hold young. On, is something wrong with the young and old play? Like, no, no. I was just saying, like, based on, like, y'all say, you know, not everybody is like that. And then, I, I don't know, you said something about Dame Dash. And I was like, well, didn't he kind of like date Aaliyah who they was working together or something? That's see, on, I never sometime. knew they dropped music together. I thought he was just. Like, well, I thought not. I thought they were in different rounds. Like it wasn't like how with Timberland was when you hear Timberland's interview and he mm-hmm. was like how in love with in with Aaliyah he was and like you he never seen no educate me. I'm gonna put it in the video. I'll shut up. Educate me. I've been fucking with this nigga. It's my mentor. Hold on. Oh shit. But so, no, it ain't nothing wrong with like older, younger. It just depends on when you ca- how young you catch them. Like yeah. that's where it get kind of weird. Eh? But I, that still don't change the fact that like the reason Taylor might you might have got that energy from her is probably because other experiences she's had where she's had to filter through that. Yeah. So like it's just it's just very common. Like I've had people buy beats just to make a song, shoot, and they shot out shot right. at me, which was like creative, but uh. <laughs> Like, I saw this shit on TV shows. Bought a beat and made a song, like, shooting a shot at me. Oh, they made this song too? God. Mix and Master? Yes, yes. It's crazy. And I was like, listening, like, I thought they just wanted to share the song. I got this beat from a shot that's so fun. Hold on, come on. I'm rapping on this motherfucker, be mine. It might be London or something. That's but listen, good. what listen. I'm saying is, but isn't that half flattery though? Like you got a full oh, check yeah, and a nigga flattery. made a song. Yeah, but like I'm not out here. I think it's half flattery. I'm going to be real. I feel like the line should be, once you shoot, 
just don't try to get your rebound. It's over with. You just shoot, shoot your one shot and it's done. And, and if it don't work, just and, let and it it's go. done. And it's done. I think you can't blame nobody for shooting one shot. No, I feel you. I think it, I had to like stop. Cut niggas off. Well, sometimes you yeah, I'm like, you know, I can think of scenarios. But I feel like I had to stop cutting niggas off like completely just because they shot Facts. a shot. Because you will have nobody. And you, it, it's yeah. like starting over is exhausting. <laughs> no, no, but listen, yeah, nah. Yeah, you know, you gotta have you some Rogers. Well, well hold on, now. go hold home, on, cause, Roger. Cause you know, <laughs> well, you know, like especially if you if you have friendships with with girls, like like at my age, like by now, girls I know I've known probably 15 years plus. When you hear the initial story, it was a shot. Like, hey, I tried to holler, but then it didn't happen, and then we ended up just being super fucking cool. You married yeah. your kids, I mean, all that extra shit now. But like like you said, if you kind of stop, I mean, off, niggas yeah. going to nig. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> the one gonna thing. Nig, right? Niggas going to nig. Niggas going to nig. You know shirt. what I'm saying? So like, <laughs> that's one thing, but like, I think that's kind of mature if you can just say, accept the one shot and keep it moving forward. Yeah. Because I think niggas is going to nig, and then you, know, you move forward. I, and I mean, if you attract, you attractive. Like, everything is like... What if this the one? Yeah. No, it just depends on how the shot is taken. Oh, no. like, he go, he go, don't be shooting from the half court. He, he go your boy Timlin shooting his shot. Oh Lord, this night. First mental is it's time for the world to hear this. I'm gonna give up a little secret. I was in love with him. I'm not. She's just a baby. I'm old. I said to myself, I'm just gonna be her brother. But he is not he. I'm fighting a lot of big war, but I love Liz. Come on, man. Hi. Right. Come on. I ain't know that. Cut, cut. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't know that. <laughs> <laughs> one of the funniest hands that I ain't know that. I ain't know that. I she said I'm gonna be her she brother. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna use that as a drop. I'm gonna use that as a drop. I ain't you know that. You got it. But see, like at least he made that executive decision, though. Nah, nah. He said at he said right at, at first. He, right he did. He said at first. He said at first. He said, he said, he said I'm she just gonna be her brother. But she a baby. <laughs> right. At least he rationalized it. But what I'm saying, I said it to say <laughs> niggas gonna nig. So he had all that. He ran all that in his head <laughs> and was like, you know what? I be brother and made him amazing music. You know, I, classic music, but like, would you rather niggas be? Niggas on it. All right, cause y'all say it's hard. It's hard, and you said if you cut niggas off, you ain't gonna have nobody. I just heard y'all say that. Would you rather be ugly and talented and get annoyed, or would you rather continue to have your good looks and be talented and get annoyed? I mean, ignored listen to the question. Annoyed. Oh, you said, oh, okay. I was like, did you say annoyed? So you said ignored yeah. or annoyed? Yeah. Oh, okay. So right now you're annoyed. <laughs> no, I get what you said. I thought you said anno- ugly and annoyed or pretty and annoyed. I'm like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't think nobody would want to like give up their good looks, right? Like, I mean, either way, you're going to have like. That's struggles. why niggas listening to the monkey pox shit. Niggas ain't fucking. No, yeah. Them. Like, COVID, they was like, we out here. Monkey pox, they was like, we might want to stay inside. Look at the last day inside. They, they, what it was, they got y'all with like three or four social media videos, and you ain't seen nobody you know with it. You're like, all right, we back outside. We back outside. Oh, God, thanks. <laughs> they <get> back outside. <laughs> 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 they scared like, y'all with the three videos. <laughs> we have our three good videos that I'm scaring folks. Yeah. Like, and then one of them was fake because Buddy was like taking them all. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That it was, was like for fake. his music video or something. Trying yeah. to promote. See, yeah. why you do that? Yeah. yeah. So, that's what I'm saying. So, is it that bad or is it just, you know, you just. No, I mean, everything is it. Like, bad. yeah. I it's mean, bad. it's bad, but it's like, you got to. I don't like, want to be ugly, though. Yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> I mean, for sure. Yeah, I mean. It's bad, but yeah, like, being ugly is a whole nother struggle. So. Exactly. But, like, does the. Because um, we've heard this from a media person before, like, does the openness and being single, like, does that kind of give you more opportunities? Because if you did walk in with a ring on your finger and they knew. I don't know. I'm gonna try married. that next time. I'm just gonna be fake just married out here. That might be a good. You know That's what? I should wear Because I wonder how many opportunities would you would you lose meeting. more yeah. for saying no to the oppor- to the advance, or would you lose more by just already being taken off the market? So the thing is, like, I really feel like if any opportunity is for you, it's for you, and if it ain't, it ain't. So like, I ain't missing out on nothing that God got for me anyway. That's right. If I'm walking in with a God ring did, and I make it, God <laughs> did. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but not like if I'm walking in with a ring, all that's going to do is help in my situation because I'll it'll down weed bullshit. it out. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you see what I'm on? So, like, what you want? It yeah. is what it is. And fuck so. around, lose your hub. Can you no. try to shoot your shot? You're like, you married, lady. This is fake. It's not even real. It's my commitment to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Damn.
<laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Now, uh, can I ask y'all a production question? Uh, speaking of Irv Gotti, because one thing in the in the documentary, and I hear this a oh, lot yeah, of music yeah, documentaries. Yeah, yeah. Like, what was your first piece of um, music musical equipment that you received that was like? Oh yeah, I got this piece and now I'm about to be on. Whether that been like a turntable or instrument or beat machine, like what was that in what age? That's a good question. Uh for me it was the machine MK three. Come okay. teach me how to use it, y'all. Oh, I got you. For sure. I got you. <laughs> oh yeah, it was so like, <laughs> bruh, it's so <laughs> fun. Like I was like, Oh my god, this is gonna make me get my ideas out like way faster. Cause up until then I was just using a MIDI keyboard and Logic. So mm. machine, it's like that hardware. You could sample stuff, and it was just like so much. Is faster. that the shit like, when, I think when it's nigga so fire when you make those beats live like that? Oh, yeah. Thank you. yeah. Is that the shit when nigga be on Instagram and they be pressing it, but Finger a new drumming. thing come on, like yeah. it's like yeah. they be changing the music, like. Yeah. <laughs> and, and was that was that recent, or you were young when you first got your first um, one? That was maybe like three years ago, three mm. or four years ago. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you like be doing that shit live. Time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. See, I know that because I don't been in the studio with a nigga making beat, and it wasn't nothing I want to hear while I'm at an event. Yeah. <laughs> so you must be crazy, nigga. <laughs> I, 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 I no, but when I do it live, I practice. I don't be like literally like just walking in there dry, like trying to okay. come up with an so idea. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was free freestyle. WWE, I mean, it can be. Like, I can, but like, I like to, if I'm like being paid to like put on a show, yeah, I like, like to 20 be prepared. Beats. Yeah, because I thought it was like, like you know, hustle and flow, like. Don't, 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 don't. Yeah, don't. no, yeah, we do that too. <laughs> but like, I like to be prepared. Yeah, yeah. Make it look good. Yeah. Not for real. Hey, man, turn that down. Hey, man, can y'all put that down for a minute, man? We will <laughs> record. That's what's up. That's what's, what's the up. best movie? To, uh, well, what's your piece? What's your piece of equipment? Well, I mean, shout out to my uh, best friend. My best friend's name is Mylon. Like, he um literally gifted me a whole setup. He gave me a computer. He gave me the speakers and a keyboard to go with it. He literally got me started. He was like, look, you need to do this. <laughs> Why y'all laughing? Y'all think he like her? No, nah, no, nah, I ain't say nothing. That was it, my only it was ironic. It's ironic. It's just ironic. No, I believe he's a real friend. I believe he's a real friend. It's just the irony. The irony. Of what we were just talking about. Like, but y'all, y'all being funny, but he never, like before, when he gave me all that shit, he never actually shot his shot at me. Like, it was but just when awesome. you got good. I mean, he might have shot it. <laughs> 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 I was just, so I was just was wondering after, when. It was after that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. Y'all still cool. He shot yeah, once. He tried. Still you said, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. That's still okay. But look, here's okay. the thing. He shot after because. After and that's a, that's shot. just a real nigga. I yeah, appreciate like, it. That's a nigga's nigga. Because you didn't like, give, give that much equipment. <laughs> Uh, I ain't gonna lie. He gave me his old shit, y'all. He had upgraded, but he had his computer. Man, he still shit. gave you the shit. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So we're doing this shit. <laughs> so we're we gonna tell stories here. I I gave equipment before too. <laughs> what you give up? up. Why was the setup? See, no, yeah. my shit was like this. Was me shooting my shot. I'm like, bitch. I don't believe in you that like, much. Let me help you get your setup because oh I'm setting myself. I can't even get a whole DJ setup. Like, hand on my homeboy. Oh, no, like Damn. I feel like when you make good relationships, like people do look out for you. My homeboy That's head crack, fact. head crack. Shout out to head crack. He gave me an MK. MK3. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just got that John not too long ago. Oh, so okay, that's what I'm trying to. Let's link. For sure. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Oh, the head crack. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all stupid. <laughs> 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 Crazy. See, I was letting that one slide. That's them head it's crap. Them. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> we fuck with your head crap. We fuck with you, bro. We fuck with you, bro. So, so like, what age did y'all know y'all were musically inclined? To, yeah, like, what did y'all make? know? This was because I, I got kids and they around that, that middle school age, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, when is that talent going to break through? <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> what, 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 what should I buy? Like somebody will get either, should it be the football? Should I get the keyboard? Buy, buy should I get the computer? Right, do, let just buy it all. Nah, the room. we ain't gonna make no petty investment. Yeah, we trying to be was direct. Uh, I started taking piano lessons in eighth grade. Oh, so you're musically trained. Yeah, I, I, uh-huh. I did piano lessons all through high school. So I would say that's a good age. But, you know, people start piano at the age of five. So, like, it's never really too early. That's about how long I've been begging for piano lessons. <laughs> so what got now, you into the music? I um I started in around, like, eighth grade. Nah. I started, right, yeah, eighth grade, like, eighth, ninth grade okay. uh, in that summer. Because uh, I remember. Table. Nah, I was actually in my mom's garage because I couldn't have boys in the house. So like my friend, he would come by and like we he literally showed me how to like work the loophole. Yeah. See that garage door open. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We, we had a lot of good times in the garage. <laughs> but, 
But yeah, like um, so around then, like I I realized because I used to play basketball a lot, so I kind of realized that I like music more than I like basketball. So I kind of made that transition. I used to play basketball. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, good time. Yeah. Good job. See, baby girl playing basketball. So you know like, I'm saying, hey. but she's not supposed to cheerlead though. Oh, okay. You okay. sound disappointed. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's just a different level. Like, you know, when she was hooping, I'm going to the games, I'm seeing her hoop. Now it's you don't like, like the uniforms, huh? Well, no, I mean, tripping off of that. It's just the go experience. The, like, I'm go going to, to the, the football game. game, but like the game over here, but I'm like right here. Because I'm watching the, you know, about two or three cheers at a time. And then she be trying to play me now. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, there you old. I'm with the girl. So I'm like, I ain't getting no love. You know what I'm saying? Aww. Like, when I, she was hooping, I feel like I got more love because, yeah. you know, she needed that. Oh, dad, you know, teach me how to hold the ball. I can't teach her no cheers. Yeah. You know oh, what I'm okay. saying? I don't, you know, I don't know nothing like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah, so we'll, we'll, get, we'll get it back. You out can learn you else. some cheers, you know? A little, a little something, a little ush bunya. Yeah. Like yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, so you, um, I know we uh, came in to R-Linux. R-Linux just dropped our uh, new album. Um, have you listened to it yet? You like it, don't like it, love it, hate it. <laughs> Uh yeah, I listen to it. I like it. Uh, Are you an Ari Lennox fan overall? I was to say. Um, so that's like a thing about me. I'm not really like a fan of a lot of people. I don't really like play a lot of people music on repeat and stuff like that because I'm like trying to like. She like Wayne. I only listen to my yeah, shit. No, <laughs> like not like no cat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's Elsa sure. do that with the podcast. I listen yeah, to another podcast. I literally don't listen to nobody else. Yeah. Podcast. Like, I mean, I got 106, 70 episodes. Look, I mean, I got, and then I got some unleashed shit that we yeah. don't drop till I die. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, we had the print the print. Oh, he be doing podcasts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, like, I record my will every year on my birthday. Your will? Yeah. That's a good practice, actually. Yeah, you never know if you're going to make it to the I next got, year. I added three new mics go to Keith. <laughs> 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 Look, the way this technology is, I'll be potting every week with them. You know what I'm saying? AI technology, I just type it in. Yeah. That's what's up, though. Yeah. But, but nah, so, I mean, like, I listen to it. Sometimes I listen to new music when it drops just to listen to it. Right. Um, Her album, I thought, was fire, though. Like, my favorite song is the one she got with Lucky Day, but I think mm. I'm biased because I'm a Lucky Day. Lucky Day fan. Yeah, like, I, I mess with Lucky is that Day. The one so, I like? yeah. I like that. I like but that Ari is super, she's super talented. I don't think like that anybody could debate that. Are you an R&B heavy person? I am more um, like pop funk heavy. Mm-hmm. Like um, like I was saying earlier, like Calvin Harris, like the Silk Sonic, like that type mm-hmm. of vibe. Like I actually Pink. really enjoy Beyonce's new album too. So like. I do like Beyonce. The yeah, dance like album? Mm-hmm. As producers, y'all appreciated it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. What about Drake's? Same vibe? I did not appreciate Drake's. Drake's was all right to me. Drake's was very loopy production wise. That's, That's what accurate. I didn't like. It wasn't a lot of dynamic range. I feel like That's a good way to describe it. Yeah, I would Beyonce it. did what Drake was trying to do. Well, that's why I think Drake just put it out. Yeah. Cuz like, he had to get ahead of it. Somebody heard and was like, "Hey, put yeah. that shit out." Like, Hurry up. Cuz your shit coming Beyonce after, after Beyonce. It's, it's like nigga, be, nah. Yeah. Yeah, anything period after Beyonce have it, but now y'all in the same genre, like yeah. you about to lose. But you know, Beyonce's wasn't as like dance, dance heavy as I thought it was gonna be. Like when she dropped Break My Soul, I thought it was gonna be like more like like that. The album had a lot of like Afrobeat influence. Like it That's was true. more like that type of dance hall than like I just, EDM. I Beyonce, I just don't like how she on um, Break My Soul. I don't like how she said outside. Outside. You're not gonna say it because say outside. <laughs> I like, it. I like it. It's, for, it's for the girls. It is yeah. for the girls. Every girl I say it, they like it. But I like, I like, I like, I like, I like, I like, it like, you know how somebody trying to talk like that? Like, you don't talk like that. Bro. That whole album was just a mood of its own. Yeah. Yeah. Like, from the moment you push play, it's just kind of like, welcome to Beyonce's world. Period. I love it. Yes. Y'all doing, uh, y'all got any uh, dance beat tracks? Dance beat? I got a couple. That's just not my... That's not my area of just like I feel like making it today. Mm-hmm. But if it's a need and somebody paying, then okay, we're gonna make this today. Right. But <laughs> what's your bag then? Uh I like um R and B melodic kind of trap records. I like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You got some new shit you want me to hear? Yeah, you know. I'll let you drop it. You know, I like it. Yeah. Oh, I got you. What's, what's, what's your bag? Uh pop funk. Pop funk. Yes. Yeah. Hip hop, like I like doing like like that, like 
line crossing between like blending genres. So like, so. it's it's funny you say that. How do you think like? I can ask you this too. Do y'all think like the genres are starting to like fall apart? Like there's no longer just yeah. hip hop and uh, rap yeah. and it's country it's and yeah. pop and yeah. songs. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of line crossing. It's whatever sure. you decided to, it is. But how does that help y'all as producers? Like, because before I feel like you could easily just say, you know what, I'm gonna just only do rap and then be stuck over there. But mm-hmm. then like with everything blending, do you get more opportunities or do you see more copycats because you know folks can kind of blend through? That's a good question. Um, like I think the problem is not when I'm making the records because the idea when you're making a record is just to make something sonically great. But I think that problem comes into play when you're sending the records. Is Trying how to am I, Yeah, like how much who am I supposed to send this to or what artist are they in this mood? Mm-hmm. You know, that's where it becomes kind of difficult to kind of categorize what kind of records are you sending to the specific artist. Yeah, mm. I agree with that. And then, that. how do y'all make, how do you make the music last longer? Like, because I feel like I for think the past like, three years, she got inspiration days. Yeah. Yeah. Like, even if, you, if you're trying away. to uh, ride waves, it'll expire. That's true. So I think, like, as long as you focus, like she said, on trying to make something that's sonically great and, like, that feels timeless. Right. But, yeah, as long as you're focused on, like, you know, not trying to, like, do what you're hearing, then you, you won't be late. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of... That's true. Yeah. So if you could literally right now, you got an album, you got an artist you get to work with and do an album with, they let you do the whole thing, who is it? Beyonce. Okay. You have Beyonce, too? I like Beyonce, for sure. I got a record for you right now. Like, please call me. Have y'all found any... Um, Local art, because you know, there's always this producer artist, and you know, we can just make a whole tape together. Uh, shout out to Mogul Ma. That's like, that's basically like my local artist, if that's what you want to call him, but we were about this shit. So, um, no, but we make a lot of music together. One thing I really, really appreciate about him, besides he's talented, is just like his professionalism, um, his work ethic. So that like, nigga didn't he, nick. Now nah, that nigga didn't need. <laughs> Don't need Jamal, please. Keep being one of the good ones. That nigga has not need. He's been a really good friend though. Like in addition to like, you know, we work together. He's actually just a cool person. So yeah, like that, that's like we've been doing a lot of stuff for sync. I know if I call him, he he gonna get it done. He gonna do it within the parameters that I set. It's gonna be on time. It ain't gonna be no bullshit, no excuses. I'm was we cussing this whole time? Yeah, you can cuss Oh, okay. Yeah. So he was yeah. late. He was late to the <laughs> I'm like, have we been cussing it? My bad. But yeah, so shout out to Mama. Ma. So you got somebody you work with locally? Um, yeah, I work with a few people locally, like, but as far as somebody that I'm just putting my eggs in all the best to myself right now. Yeah, so. That's what's yeah. you're an artist. You're an artist too. Like so that. like, I mean, when I was just focused on producing, then yeah, damn, yeah. here y'all go. There you go. It's okay. <laughs> y'all making me y'all making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I swear this don't happen all the time. <laughs> Dropping shit. Super nervous. <laughs> so, everything happening in the game right now, it's a lot of crazy things happening. You see Young Thug Gunner with the Rico case. You hear drill music. Dang. As producers, do y'all feel y'all have a level of responsibility of what artists are putting in music and what they're putting out? Or y'all just, look, we make the ingredients, them niggas cooking the food? To an extent, to an extent like... After you produce it, the writers or the artists is kind of going to take it and do what they're going to do unless you're in the room with them and you're providing your influence on it. Yeah. And also, like, when you send beats to certain artists, you kind of already know what type of music they make. So if you don't want that type of stuff, then don't send that artist beats. Like, I think once, like, you kind of just, it's like, I think the responsibility just starts with, like, who you working with. Like, if that's not what you want promoted over your track, then don't send your tracks to that artist. Because, mm-hmm. like, you can't send a track to an artist and expect them to do something different than they normally would do. Like she said, unless if y'all, like, in the studio together and you're influencing them. But, like, if you're just sending it off, you kind of at the mercy of whatever they do. So. so how y'all feel right now about the current state of music and kind of what's being put out? Where y'all at on it? I... <laughs> So as far as the responsibility of the artist, I do feel like, um, that, well, let me just say this before we even get into it. Yeah, stop. Don't be posturing either. Y'all just talk. Let me, okay. I just feel like y'all kind of posturing. Diddy might be listening, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, listen. So um, with the Rico stuff and everything that's going on, I do feel like 
they are all, and by they y'all know who I'm talking about. They are always trying to find a reason to lock us up. Fuck this you, is extra, <laughs> bro. Like I don't Damn. think that I don't I don't really like what they got going on because I think they just looking for a re another reason to use the prisons for us because we know that that's what most prisons were created for anyway. Us. So like I think that that's really what's going on here. But as far as like what these artists are putting out, you know, some of this music is really crazy. Like the drill music get like intense like, I can't listen to it like I'd be like oh my god like y'all are like turning up I can't like I don't relate to that type of life like Reaching. I can't like so as far as that like I do feel like people need to be a little more you know mindful of the stuff that they're saying because they are influencing kids now you got kids putting out drill music like and I mean like talking about shooting people and stuff and they like 10 11 years old like right. So I definitely don't like that. I do feel like there should be some sort of accountability, but do I think that the accountability should come from people trying to put them in jail? Absolutely not. So you disagree with Charleston White when he Charleston White said he was at shit. Everybody know Thug was in them streets. He said Thug, he like it's all them cases we can track back shooters. We know he he deserved about ten. That's what Charleston White said. You disagree? I mean, I feel like people. I feel like people have always talked about Thug and his involvement in the streets. Like that's not the issue. Like I whether, personally think Young Thug a killer. <laughs> he, I wouldn't doubt it from the stories that I've heard. But that's not what the we're talking about, right? We talking about reflect. the lyrics. <laughs> they yeah, reflect exactly. Like if we're talking Just about his street life, or are we talking about the fact that he rapping about it? Like, yeah, like my thing is. is Y'all talk. Y'all using this man's lyrics. Yeah. They can be complete need some, lies. Some concrete evidence right. against them. Then, like we talk about putting them in jail for whatever. But the lyrics, I think, don't have. Okay, so so let's let's just take this off a of thug for a minute and like keep it real. Like when music is produced, when lyrics are written, it is an interpolation of your life, maybe your friend's life around you. Like it, it's a proximity to you. That's fine, but rap music ain't so, the only type of music where people is use like using their lyrics and talking about their lifestyle. But who are they attacking? Us? No, it's not. But rap so, lyrics like, seem to only be the ones when I say that I was on the corner posted and I shot such and such. The such next and week, such and such, such and such pop up with a body, and it's like, ain't no coincidence. Rap is probably one of the only genres where like hell, we on this podcast talking like giving our opinion. If one of these YSL niggas don't like what they heard, they don't, they compress us. Yeah, that shit don't happen in country. You know what I'm saying? Like I can talk about Toby Keith, and ain't nobody finna come holler at me about. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm only, just, only reason I'm saying this because we talking about responsibility on the producer side. Like as podcasters, we're now being dragged into this. That's why it was a whole uh, debacle online with Adam Twenty Two and Joe Budden. Joe Budden called out Adam Twenty Two saying. That he's provoking this shit. So what he'll do, he'll bring one rapper on and say, man, I heard you said this about this on the rap. Who were you talking about? Making them go into it. Then he'll bring the other rapper on and let them. And so he's like starting podcast beef that's going beyond the lyrics, right? So Joe Budden was like, as podcasters, we have a responsibility to not participate in that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because that shit be going on the next level. What Keith's saying is, yeah, like on one end. Yeah, I'm here to report it. Like it's, you know, like what Adam was saying. The other part about it is, but you niggas is doing that. You know what I'm saying? And like, I'm just reporting the news, and I'm just trying to figure out why is rap because rap is the only music that is really real. Like it used to be. It's not necessarily of, really real. No, though. Let, me tell you, let me tell you what I mean. When rap first came out, and you hear broken glass everywhere, like these are the breaks. You're headed for self destruction, fuck the police. Like as we're getting closer and closer in musical genre history, like these music, these songs are a reflection of the time and what's happening, and they're real. A lot of other music, like especially when it comes like the R and B and pop and shit, is written. Hell, Ashanti is writing for J Lo. J Lo knows nothing about being posted with her niggas on the block, but they let us say nigga because Ashanti wrote it, right? With rap, you got to write your own lyrics, you got to live your words. J Lo said nigga. Oh, yeah, she said. Nigga. Damn. Yeah, he said, y'all let her do it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> y'all let her do it. <laughs> but I'm saying, in, in rap, you got to write your own lyrics. If you don't write your own lyrics, you ain't real. If you didn't live your lyrics, you wasn't real. So, like, like we can't say it's real. We can't say it ain't real. But then on other end, Jay Z dropped a verse. We like, man, all that shit he said, we know it's real. Like, we can't on one end say rap really ain't real. But it's really like hearsay, though. Like, I mean, if you're going to. 
in a court of law, like you said you did it, I said you might not have done it, like it's still no factual uh, base to Yeah, it's to, just yeah. No, nah, it ain't they ain't just going there with their with just lyrics. It ain't like they're just saying, This is all we have. It's there's recordings, there's I mean this I just Rico don't see case. why the lyrics need to be involved at all. Like if you have a case, I don't see why the lyrics need to be involved. Oh, because you said it. That's yeah. why. I'm sorry. But it's a, I, I can mean, say anything. Yeah, I can say the freedom sun is so, raised. All right, like, all right, reverse it. Like reverse it. it. Your cousin get killed. We got a chance to go to get justice. We know who did it. And they rapping about shooting a nigga on the uh Cleveland Avenue. Your cousin got killed on Cleveland Avenue. You saying remove that from the uh evidence? You saying you would want it removed? I'm not saying remove it. I'm just saying that I don't feel as if that it it really holds much weight if you can't prove it like with factual, tangible evidence. Well, but, but I think what they're saying is they can't. Like, I think what they're saying is they say this is when, a piece. when when you rap about carrying a gun in your purse, right? Because you know Thug carries a purse, and then they have a picture of you pulling a gun out of your purse. Your lyrics. Like if, but if, if you have a picture of me pulling the gun out of the purse, why, then do you, it's why does it matter about the lyrics? Because, because you're just adding yourself. on to it. It's, it's, just it's, like, okay, it's, like, it's I, like the tape. It's like a wearing a wire. Like If you know I'm selling drugs, but why see, are you wearing I feel the like wire to just, hear me say it? But that's just a target to, to, to rap because like as a writer, and I write a lot of R&B, right? Sometimes I lose inspiration on what I want to talk about from my life. So I'll go watch a movie, and I'll physically actually talk about a story that aligns with the movie that I just saw. Like, when I was watching it, how did I feel about the characters? Like, you know, what did I see? What emotions did they draw up? And I would create a whole song about it. But it actually has no reflection on my personal life. I feel like that if with a good writer, that can be any case. Hmm. Okay. I like that. Yep. I like that. But I think that because of that level of realism in rap, that's the reason why our lyrics will look like like, but and because of the ultimate thing, like, if you found out that Jay Z never wrote any of his shit and it was all jazz o, it like besmirches his whole fucking like career, his whole rap stats, all of that. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think that's why sometimes it's a tricky line. Like I listen, I don't agree. I don't think you should be able to use the lyrics, but when the lyrics do line up, and we've been in the studio, like you've heard niggas rap shit, and you like that shit happened. You know what I'm saying? And that I've also heard niggas rap shit and be like, Reggie got shot. Benny <laughs> got yeah. shot. Yeah, yeah. So niggas be flex. For me, I say use them, but that's just me. I say fuck it. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I don't think you should use them, but I was just I'm on asking the other because end. I say use them, motherfucker. Shit. <laughs> That's no, that's, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't like using them per se because we should be able to. Like you, don't, you really do need to prove. Yeah. It in court, you just can't use my lyrics. But I feel like, yeah, the but that's, rappers that's that are saying it are stupid. That's what's being done. Yeah. That's, now, that's action. That's that's factual. But that's what's being done though. Again, so we about to see. That's why I'm ready for January. Because January, when they start this case, we about to see. People think they're just going in there. All we have is your rap lyrics. Nah, they got a combination of shit. This rap lyrics is like glue that's putting all this shit together. Like, so what I'm saying is, in January we are about to see what this look like when you have a major Rico case based on rappers lyrics and music. We about to see how they lay it out. It could be up. We'll see. But I feel like this about to be the first OJ case of our generation. How niggas? How my mama was watching OJ? Like I remember my mama making us shut up. Because she was stuck to that TV watching OJ. I feel like that's what's about to happen with this uh, Young Thug and Gunner case. Like, mm-hmm. all of us about to be watching it and seeing what's laid out. But this shit out of this shit out of control, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the music is just too reflective of what's happening. Like, we uh, young niggas just doing these pills and overdosing and dying. It's it's just too reflective. And like I said, your dumb ass. Start rapping about that shit. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's kind of stupid when you basically tell incriminating yourself. Like you saying it is the issue, the you first steal issue. Cars to take <laughs> off the tags. <laughs> when finally wrote that lyric, I like, damn, what the fuck song that came from? I mean, if you listen, like, I think that's the reason why Twenty One Savage gets away with it because I don't. I think it's coming out that he probably didn't do none of that shit. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Was like, there's no. No, I'm saying like, I think it's even that like. I think he's just rapping other people's lives. Like, there's no way he really did caught all them bodies the way he said he did. 
Yeah. 50 Cent's another good one. And like, we thing. all know 50 fake gangster. You know what I'm saying? He's like a paperwork gangster. You know what I'm saying? But like 50's not doing. I don't know. 50 got shot nine times. No, no, he got shot because he was talking shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he, he's that type of nigga. But like, hell, yeah. 50, 50, 50 just swole. Yeah. So he looked hard, but he really more business than he is gangster. Mm-hmm. And you know how some niggas just do hard shit because you got to. I mean, like, you be in situations, you got mm-hmm. to punch the nigga. Like, you might not really want to be exactly, yeah. but you just got to because that's just what the rule is. Yeah. That's Real what I think 50 Cent is. Yeah. yeah. But now, nah, that's what I'm saying. 50 Cent, paperwork gangster. Like, just does what he got to do. But like, Said man, they stupid. They shouldn't be saying some of that shit. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So for y'all, completely different direction. Your plan, your vision. If everything goes right, what does it look like for Higgy on the top? What does it look like for London on the top? If this plan that you wrote out to that nigga that was nigging, yeah. <laughs> if that business plan goes right, <laughs> what does it look like? First of all, how many pages was that plan? It wasn't over like three pages. Like, <laughs> like, Straight nigga. It was. It was like the the outline. It was. You know what I'm saying? You got a nigga table of content. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But like, um, for me, it's just to be fully sustainable. Like, stand on my own two feet to be able to um, give myself a marketing budget. Uh, give my, you know, pay myself as an artist, uh, and be able to portray the image that I. And in the light that I would like to be seen in, just to be able to create freely and be able to to put myself in a position to give myself the marketing budget and things that I desire versus having to kind of go back and ask Mm -hmm. a nigga for something. Yeah. (laughs) So that's, yeah, cut and dry. That's for, you know, singles, EPs, my merch, all that. Like, I want to be able to do that myself or with a partner who ain't nigging. (laughs) <laughs> yeah I feel that for me um, it just looks like you know being able to maintain and like knowing that money is coming in on a regular basis uh, multiple revenue streams all through entrepreneurship um, sync licensing merge like you said um, like streaming things like that um, but also just like creating opportunities for other people so, you know, eventually I would like to step into a music supervision role so I could provide the opportunities that have been so helpful to me to other people and um, just get my friends paid as well as get myself paid sure. and be able to help out my family. Just, you know, that's the dream. That's the dream. Yeah, what's up? Sure. So I know we ain't there. We we well on the way. Um, I know for sure for Higgy, but like, what are y'all just inspiration and motivation to other artists, right? What is the hustle you do while you're doing your music? Like I got a partner, and he's a pro- jazz prodigy, a protege, mm. and he's out in uh, L.A. doing his thing, releasing albums. But his hustle was church. Every Sunday, mm-hmm. he was playing somebody at church. I know Zaytoven. Mm-hmm. Zaytoven, he uh, played at a church for the longest before he just, cause he was cutting hair at Stonecrest. That's how I got to know Zay, mm. and uh, he was cutting hair at the Mall of Stonecrest and playing at his church. And this is after he had. Some shit like mm-hmm. this was after he was Zaytoven, and he was just that humble, just doing his. Cause he said he loved it. He loved to cut hair, mm-hmm. and he loved his church. So like, what are y'all doing right now in the in lieu of the success? Um, so I put a book out. It's called PTO Pray Time Off. It's just about how I quit my job to do music full time. Um, so pray, also, pray time off. Pray time off. Okay. Like pay time off. PTO. Pray time off. I like it. I like it. I Thank like you. It. Link in the show notes. Link in the show notes. Yes, link in the show notes. <laughs> Um, and then I also converted it to an online course because after I put the book out, I started doing in-person workshops where people could come and we would discuss like concepts from the book and how they will relate to their current situation and they can meet other like-minded people and like have accountability partners, stuff mm-hmm. like that. So um, I just turned it into an online course too. So um, that's like my main thing. And then of course I have like merch, but yeah, the books and the online course. Okay. I'm going to get some of y'all merch too. So you got support. Sure. So for me, uh, I'm a realtor as well. I have a passion in uh, helping people de- uh, build and develop their real estate portfolio. Uh, so I work with a lot of like investment real, uh, real the investment clients and people who are looking to buy properties to do for like Airbnbs or to buy and hold and have tenants. And then um, I have a company that I partner with to manage those uh, rental properties that they take on. Uh, so yeah. I, 
that is kind of what keeps me afloat uh, in the meantime um, it, while trying to work on my artistry and music. So. I love it. I love it. I be saying here you all the time, but uh, you might call her. Hold on, hold on. I'm looking at the house. I'll call you back. Let <laughs> <laughs> exactly. me ask y'all this. Um, have y'all received an, an, an important check? Not a life-changing check, but like a check that was very important to you. I asked because I saw Wayne and Drake. It was in concert with Nikki, and Drake said um, it wasn't the biggest check he ever had. But the most important check he got was from Wayne for thirty thousand because he was like, yeah, put all his money in the mixtape, you know, job, mama not working, and he was able to take thirty thousand dollars back home to Canada with his mom, and they was able to eat for the rest of the year. Yeah. So it was like he said, you know, he done made millions, you know, all, but that thirty thousand was the most important check. Yeah. Have y'all received like an an important check yet? Like for that? sure, I have. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, um, yeah. I so. I kind of, uh, I had to build myself out of a real kind of depressive time that I was in, uh, and like life just beat my ass, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just kind of really got to that point, and um, at the time I had broke up with my boyfriend, I had moved to Houston, and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing in Houston, <laughs> like I was just in Houston, kind of trying to run away from what I was feeling here, uh, and so... Uh, in the meantime, my um, I had a friend. He was a personal trainer at the time, and he uh, met this lady who was trying to put her son on. And um, for the most part, he kind of negotiated a little bit on my behalf and got me in the door because they was looking at people like Jazzy Faye and uh, um, B from was it Northern B or mm -hmm. so Northern B. Northern Northern B. B. Yeah. And so like I guess they were just trying to text the dude, you know what I mean, and so um, I pitched myself, and yeah, I came out with <laughs> to produce three songs, mm -hmm. so yes. I wanted to, I, I felt like I negotiated so good, I felt like I was taking advantage, so I gave him a whole album, like, but, <laughs> 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 but I used that money to really move back to Atlanta, get my shit together, and uh, I produced uh, the guy's project and managed it for him for a whole like almost two years. We kind of pushed and worked together, so they really got me back on my feet and believe so it. Back out. Yeah. You would have had a lick if you would have slept it on three songs. She had a goddamn lick, man. <laughs> look, look, that, look that how you know karma gonna come back tenfold for you for that one, yeah. like straight up. I would have had no three songs. <laughs> Trust me. I got three more for you. <laughs> Towards the end of that process, his head got so big. I was like, you know what? I only got paid for three of these. I got, you know. <laughs> I would have went and got there YouTube, some of them 200, $200 beats. Gave that nigga 20. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bro. Hey, I'll eat for you, bro. I'll eat you. I'll eat you. You don't need to uh, worry uh, about it, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, so for me, uh, uh, it's between two. I want to say uh, the first check I ever got for a scene placement was really important to me, but not because of how much it was, because it actually wasn't that much, but just because of what it represented. I've been trying to get into scene for three years and never got a single placement. Mm. So that first one was like, boom, we in here. Like I got the door open. And shout out to um, Paul Stewart, music supervisor for The Hype and a lot of other cool stuff. But um, the placement was for this show called The Hype on HBO Max. And it had like Offset, Cardi B, like I just say, a that's bunch the, of that's the uh, fashion, fashion. Show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what we talked about on the pod. Where Offset, he out of here. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Fun amigos. <laughs> but yeah, they about to come out with season two mm -hmm. actually. So like that check to me was just like, wow, like I could do this now. Like I actually, you know, I have my foot in the door, and I've established this relationship. Like Ain't fast forward like from that, check. man, that it was, was a, proof. Was I, a, I framed that bitch. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah it was only five hundred, and I was like. Yes, yeah, we do. And I'm like wondering who be making those little music, like making the songs the and on the music, show, yep. but like it, it has something to do with the show, but it, it's not a real artist. You're like, damn, but this sound kind of like it's hitting though. Yeah, That'd yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that one was like really important to me. Um, and then fast forward to now, they're about to drop season two, and I have 12 placements that's going to be on this upcoming oh, season. So it's like, it's, that was just like, wow. Like, we well, I put with that show heavy, so now I'm going to be listening yeah. extra hard. Hey, I'm out sure <laughs> almost every episode. So, that's what's up. I yeah, can't wait. So I'm really excited. And then the second one um, is definitely, uh, it was this. 
paid, which was just the upfront money for the, the juju thing. Um, and then more came because that one was important to me because I recognized like with that type of license, they have to keep licensing it if they want to use it in different areas. So the first, the first check was just for a certain period of time. We got to keep all of our ownership and it was only for TikTok and social media. Dope. When they wanted to come back and put it on ESPN and Nickelodeon and, you know, NBA TV, they had to pay to license it again Dope. and again and again down to this day, like. Amazon Prime just hit me up like a couple of weeks ago because um, the football got moved to Thursday night football yeah, got moved uh -huh. to Prime. Mm -hmm. They want to license Juju to use it for Thursday night football, so they have to pay us again. So it's just okay, like so that one was like a lit. Bag drop. Bruh. More money, more man, money. Man, so what about what about uh? That have all been coming on the podcast. Some of them, I'm like, I got time. I'm just <laughs> <waiting>. <laughs> Nah, I, I, I just waiting on hot Cheetos and Doritos hey, and Tito's. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Hey, reach out to them. For sure. Yeah, I, mean, I love like stories. Like you said, just reach out. Just reach out. Find somebody in the company. Like, maybe not the CEO, but like, yeah. just look. Like, go on LinkedIn. Go to the company. Look at the people who work for the company. Yeah. Reach out. You never know. For just sure. Reach out. Because yeah. I still feel like it's a good-ass food marketing no, tool. Yeah. Sure. Now, LinkedIn, I would say LinkedIn is probably one of the most underutilized platforms uh, for millennials. Um, but because our worlds are now intersecting, because you know, LinkedIn was for big corporation people, stuff like that. But now big corporations and creatives are working hand in hand. Like, Because mm -hmm. content is the new currency, and everybody needs it, and they can't create it. And we can't pay for it. So, like, yep. it's it's like a perfect partnership. So, you're about to start seeing more people go on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Just build other relationships. Like, yep. literally. And they all there. And it's worth paying for the premium because you get a DM, mm -hmm. unlimited mm -hmm. amount of people. Mm -hmm. you know, little yep. hack, little network hack, tidbit. network hack. You know, yep. A little tidbit, tidbit, <laughs> tidbit. For sure. So, um, man, I had another question. I just lost that shit. Fuck. Fuck, I had a question. It's that uh, one right there. Huh? It's that one. Yeah. The one you thinking about right there. You were saying to me about how niggas ever broke you off for some money or something. For some. You were talking about the biggest check. We were talking check. about the biggest check. Yeah, the yeah. biggest check. Now, I was going to tell my biggest check story. I said, never mind. I ain't going to tell that. Like, that was, a, what, that was the mean, most important check. Yeah, the most important check. That was, that, was, yeah, most that was a good question because I was really sitting here like, man, damn, when the fuck was my most important? Nigga, I done had a lot of most important checks. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't see, that's why I said most important because it's like up until a time. Yeah, like I, I don't shit. Yesterday, Shawty gave me forty dollars. Like, <laughs> <laughs> shit was crazy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get to this meeting. <laughs> oh shit. Um, but nah, man. Uh, I guess I can. I can't think of my question. That's it. Um. I, I got another question. I got a question for London. Well, Higgy, are you musically trained too? No, I'm okay. not. I'm actually the complete opposite. Because I was going to ask, like, does it make it easier when you can read the notes, like read the music for producers? Um, yeah, so I actually, even though I learned how to read music, I barely ever use that. Like, I just be playing oh, based so drum on drum line was hear. right. You don't need like, no. <laughs> no, no, let me say, it is It is helpful, like, if you want to get into scoring and um, things like that, like, so you can write out the notes and have other people play the parts and, like, you know, like, but also there are a lot of tools where you don't have to do that, like, in Logic, for example, if you're playing notes, you can pull up the piano roll and it'll just have it written out so you can send it if you need to. But, um, yeah, like, even That's though cool. I, I did learn how to read music, unfortunately, I be feeling, like, bad on myself. Like, dang, I don't use it that much. But, I mean, I still be out here making music. So, damn near, it's, like, cursive. That's what you're saying. Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> I just not cursive. Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about... I, I was just telling somebody, I'm like, yes, I know how to write a cursive. They're like, you do? I'm like, yeah, I remember. Like, yeah, I mean... <laughs> The little B like this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that shit. You yeah, know? it's like cursive to me. You know like, I learned how to do it, but I don't really use it. So, shame on me. Shame on me. That's what's up. So, yeah. is there a, a plan B? Like, if, is this like, when do we say, you know what, man? Never. You know, I ain't doing this shit. No more. I'm too old for this shit. Right. Is there a plan B? Not really. I think I tried to make real estate my plan B for a while. And it was just kind of like, I don't feel right. <laughs> Unless yeah. I'm creating, so I think so the be, plan B be 50 is the, old producers. Like I mean, I think the plan B is just to freely do whatever it is that you decide to do that day. Yeah, and it's like with anything. Like if you're working for a company, 
like you move up in that company, you're not going to be doing the same thing you was doing on entry level by the time you're 50. You might still be working for the company, but you're going to be, you're going to have a higher position. I look at music the same way. Like when I'm 50, I'm still going to be involved in the music industry. Am I going to be making all the beats? Maybe not. Am I going to be supervising other producers underneath me? Maybe, you know? Mm -hmm. So I look at it as like levels. Um, plan B's, I don't really think so. Like when I was, um, I, this was my side thing for so long. Now that it, it is my main thing, I don't ever want to go back. Like my degree is in computer science and engineering. So I was working in IT prior to doing music full time. I hated every second of it. Was the money good? Yeah. I was about to say, like, you left that good paying good. ass job. Yeah, exactly. What did your parents exactly. say to you? <laughs> my, mom, my mom was super supportive. She knew, like, because even like I've always been into music. Like you said, like we've been, I knew I was musically inclined at a young age. I went to school for computer science because I had a full ride to Ohio State. I was, you must have been a straight A student. I was, so. I was valedictorian in uh, high school. Oh, oh what? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, that's yeah. the only reason. That's the only reason. I would be supportive of my child doing what you yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. If so, he was a valedictorian type of okay, I was going to say, I went your to school. Mom didn't have to pay for that college. My mom didn't have to pay for <laughs> that's, college. That's I didn't take out no drop loans. Out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> facts. So, oh, I didn't drop out. I graduated. Got my degree. Like, everything. And then I took that. Like, it was all a part of my plan, though, because... Ohio State, I was going there because I didn't have to pay for it, but they didn't offer music production as a major. So I had to make a decision like, am I going to go to another school and pay to learn what I want to learn? Or am I going to take advantage of this degree, get get out, get a job that's making money and then pay to do what I want to do with music? And that's the route I chose. So I got a degree. I chose computer science because I was like, you could get in and out in four years and be making money quick. So I got a job where I could work from home because it's computer science. Moved to Atlanta. I'm working this job. I'm paying for music production school now. Paying for equipment. Paying for like you know to be in this city for so real. You, for real. So you self funded. Yeah, I self funded yeah. everything. Mm. So oh, like I, I took thought, the I other route. Niggas over there, nigga. <laughs> Oh no, niggas. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> niggas <laughs> no, I mean, no, not playing, no, 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 but there no. is a level of no. independence you get when you self fund. Your yeah, life. exactly. So yeah. like, I was like doing my own thing, like, but it was all a part of like this plan to get to music. I remember when I found out I was going to be working and how much money I was going to be making, like fresh out of college. I called my mom, like, oh yeah, they gave me an offer. This is how much they paying. She was like, oh, that's a great amount. That's more than I make. You know, like you don't sound excited. And I was like, I mean, it's straight. And she was like, you ain't going to be happy till you make them beats. And I was like, exactly. And like, I just, that, that was it. That like a goddamn movie in a movie. I was about to say. <laughs> that sounds like a line in a movie right there. <laughs> Speaking of movie, man, what y'all think about Issa Rae rap shit? I like it. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? You should mm -hmm. watch People it. People keep telling me it's good. It is good. Okay. It's good. It, how, it reminds how, how, you of the City Girls, though. How close is it to your... Like, do you feel like he has some of the similar stories that we want? Uh, I seen the whole season, so yeah, I don't, I don't know about like the, my story is similar, but it's definitely a lot of things. Just being a woman in the industry that you can relate to, uh, that the characters are going through, so um, it's it's very relatable on both sides. So mm -hmm. niggas just hand you stacks of cash and just saying go shopping. See, I haven't, I haven't crossed that threshold. Yet. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, look. I'm waiting. A on nigga that ain't one. nigga like that before. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, show, that nigga I was was like nigga. girl, you better call out tomorrow. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. oh, last question I have. Uh, we talked about classics. Name one timeless classic, both of you. Yeah, that's good. That's a good question. Mm. Smarter, go first. That's such a good question. Just a classic song. Ooh, I gotta go. Okay, so we've been talking about Timberland. I gotta go, Timberland. Um. Are you that somebody is my Ooh, timeless classic. That's a good one. The beat classic. is just fire and you with know, the baby. Man yeah. with the baby. Like who would do that? Timberland. Like, uh Timberland. exactly. Timberland did. Okay. 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 No. I thought you were gonna say Indian flute. Mm. <laughs> that went too, you know. <laughs> Fact. Um for me, like I think a song that I would consider as timeless just because it never gets old to me is um Anytime, Any Place by Janet Jackson. Mm. Okay, okay. That's a good okay. one. That's a good mm -hmm. one. Okay, y'all got a little, y'all got a little style. What's yours, Keith? Timeless classic. Um, uh, what's the, the Whitney Houston that um, be your lady tonight? Oh, the only because oh, I, yeah. I I like that. I, I heard it the other day, and when she did it acapella, it's like and yeah. uh, <laughs> that was a good like, and then all vocals like wow, like, mm. timeless classic. Yeah, I, I yeah, that one. What's yours? You know, I like old school music, so it's like my girl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 
Man, got different options. You know, I've listened to it on the way over here. Say yes. By Flow and Trees? No, 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 no. Um, by the, uh, it's not the OJs. If you just say yes. Who is that? You don't even know who it is. Yeah. That's the, it's the OJs. It's the, uh. Sing it. If you just, the whispers, that's what it is. All of them. Yeah, yeah. With the yeah, whispers. yeah, the whispers. That's why I was like, why the fuck am I thinking the OJs? <laughs> Uh, if you just say yes, girl, you won't. Yeah, that's it. Okay. My favorite song yeah. from the Whispers is Rocksteady. Yeah, yeah Rocksteady. Oh, yeah, uh, Rocksteady. Like rock um, I mean, the Whispers just got, like, matter of fact, I was watching something. WLK did, like, an interview thing with them a few years back. And them niggas still look good. Them niggas still sing. Like, them niggas, like, it's two, it's two original ones still mm. here live. Like, you know. I'm going to tell you another time it's classic. Yeah. By Usher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the time. It's only <laughs> like every I said, time it come on, I'm a, I'm a vibe. Because uh, yeah, when you have kids, right, and you start going to, like, birthday parties, and you start realizing, like, this song old as hell, but, like, a six-year-old would be like, you got Usher, yeah? Yeah. Really? You know about, yeah. I did not know the that, that, that's, that's, that's the song definition. song that makes you feel, like, good. Any song. Well, My little any, girl, any she's, song like, 12, that make she it, still likes that song. Any, yeah. song that, any song that make it to white people weddings and cruise ships. Mm. Is a timeless. Oh, that's song. This, this is how we do it. Yeah, like you know, every white person mm-hmm. play that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like <laughs> that's like, my joint too. <laughs> Look, Cody, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, so ladies, I really enjoyed this conversation with y'all, man. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah. That's some real music heads. Yeah, yeah. What's up? I appreciate y'all for coming on. You know what I'm saying? Rocking. Let's do this. Don't let it be a hundred and something don't episodes. Do that. Don't do that. Like, come on, man. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, been like, uh, yeah. Been a long time. Uh, can't this, tell my, this my second invite. Yeah, I feel like we try to get you on like one. We more. did, do we did, but we ain't gonna, don't do I ain't that. Gonna, I ain't call her up. <laughs> she thought a nigga with nigga. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> nigga with nigga, nah, nigga, we potting. <laughs> but now I feel like when we like when the uh, when we have female uh, music drop and everything, like when Beyonce dropped, we didn't know who to call. Like, yeah, we really we didn't, call. and I wish I would have called y'all because yeah. y'all yeah. love the album. Uh, so like now we know who to call. Y'all so. talked about Megan album already too. The uh, trauma scene. Nah, they don't fuck with me. Yeah, well, oh, I, I fuck with me. Oh, damn. I fuck with me. It, oh, was, it was riding, but it sounded like a throwaway. Oh. It sounded when, when Future dropped those two albums back to back to oh, get out of Rico, uh, Rocco's contract. Like uh, okay. that's what it sounded like. Oh, wow. but I'm looking forward to the next one. I've been a Meg fan since she first dropped. Like, yeah, she fire like that. Yeah, she be lying. Well, all right. How do people? How do people fire? How do people fire? How do people fire? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Who shot Meg? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. Okay, follow me on Instagram at London Elixir. That's E L I X I R, and then the letter L, the letter X. But if you just type in London Elixir, I will pop up. And then my website is LondonElixir.com. Yes, yes. For sure. Um, you guys can catch me at Higgy Beats, and it's at H I G G Y B E A T S. And anything you want to find is in my link in my bio. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, ladies, we really appreciate y'all. Thank you for just coming, dropping knowledge game, and letting the people know, you know, the creators of the new wave and the new sound. You know what I'm saying? I think people need to know y'all names now because I definitely see y'all going much higher than you already are. Thank and you. It's an honor to say I know you, and I'm friends with y'all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So we say it every week, people. We love y'all. We need y'all. But most importantly, we can't wait to see y'all next week. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Jess Eldridge Podcast. Take it away, Inc. Just a pastime. City with T.I. Outcast. And ooh, we everybody know about Atlanta. It's just a cool G. Everybody know about the scammers, about the trappers. And when we living now, it's just that lifestyle. Turn on my podcast. I'm trying to hit it real now. Hit perspective. We want to keep it grill now. Every day we on the grind. Sometimes it's hard to tune out the outside. Oh, Tune in on the podcast, yeah. Real things, you know we gon' last, yeah. Kick it back, kick it back, kick it back.